How many still asleep? <laughs> Amen. Let's uh, let's just open with a word of prayer this morning. Brother Diggs, would you mind to open us this morning? Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, Father, we know that you're such a great God. And all your grace and mercy is bestowed upon us right now at this very moment. And Lord, as we prepare one more time, Lord, to have service. Lord, we pray there'll be no flesh in the way, Lord, none of in our minds but you. And Lord, we just ask, Father, that you be able to create such an atmosphere that the man of God will be able to just lay the convictions of the word out and we'd be able to receive it. Lord, bless each and every heart here. And as we hear, let us understand what the Spirit is trying to say to us. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a minute. I'm going to do something a little different this morning. I'm sure you guys have never seen it done before. So um, we're going to sing a little song. But uh, we're going to have some crowd participation because I'm sure everybody needs to get their blood pumping this morning. It's been a long night. It's been a great weekend. I know we've all had a lot of fun. At least I've had fun watching you guys have fun. <laughs> so, but uh, we're going to do this little song. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You guys know that one? Pro probably seen that before. Amen. So we're going to the guys. You all going to stand up first. You guys get the hallelujah, 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 hallelujah part. And you sit down and the girls are going to hop up and they're going to praise the Lord. All right. You got it? All right. All right, guys, let's go. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. fast enough. I don't, I don't think you guys are moving enough yet this morning. All right, let's speed that up a little bit, Chris. You got this? Here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. faster. I don't think you guys are I don't think you guys are quite ready yet. All right, here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Glory. Amen. You can be seated this morning. We just want to take just a minute, make some important announcements. Now that your blood is moving and your focused mentally we want to make sure we get these critical announcements to you my what can we say about our first year at bethel camp 2021 <laughs> hallelujah amen <laughs> i hope no one's constipated this morning I don't know if no one has any gas this morning. And all those online are thinking, what in the world is he talking about? <laughs> and all those that didn't make it to the bonfire service. Amen, Brother Diggs. We appreciated that. We appreciated the last night with Brother Diggs. How many appreciate Brother Diggs? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
We got an entire uh, uh, good quality video we recorded last night. So on our website, Facebook, and our website, um, and YouTube, it'll be uploaded later this uh, next week. When we all wake up from our dizziness, we'll, uh, we'll get that done. But uh, we just want to say thank you to Brother Burley. Uh, I don't see him out here this morning, but how many appreciate it, Brother Burley Williams? Amen. Yeah. yeah. I believe Brother Burley's, Brother Diggs, Brother John, we invite ministers like this because they have just a special gift to be able just to connect at a level that is meaningful to you in your life. We have a, now a large spectrum here of ages, and I just have sat and watched. It's so amazing how the word has matched, had something for every age, for all the way from 13 all the way to, you know, 30s, whatever we got in here. Uh, I don't want to single out the oldest person at camp, but uh, we have some in their 30s. And so the word has been able to meet every need specifically. I want to also say thank you, and I just don't have words to express how much uh, I could. I, I, I would want to express thanks to all of the teams, all of them. That includes the sound team, the counselors, the food team, the music team, and I messed up already by starting to name teams because there's so many of them. Our security team, uh, just so many groups that were just so essential. We sat there last night and tallied it up and th thought, man, we didn't have, you know, our deacon team. I'm going to miss somebody, ain't I? Y'all help me if I missed anybody. Uh, every single one of them were just so essential, and you guys have no idea. Um, the hours of labor and preparation and hours and hours upon hours. We have a sister, uh, two sisters here that have been shuttling people back and forth from the airport, missing camp and having, having any chance to have a benefit from camp, from the ministry, because they were out uh, all hours of the night. We well, left at two o'clock this morning to take people to the airport, all so that you could have a chance at revival. I want to give those sisters a hand clap. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Sister, amen, Sister Wanda Gonzalez, Sister Andrea Buckman, and anybody else that, that might have shuttled that I'm not aware of, we just want to say thank you to them. That brings up my next um, comment. If you have a flight out on American Airlines, you need to verify. We need you to step out of this service, verify your flight. American Airlines canceled 1,400 flights. We just got the news of that. So if you're on an American Airlines flight and you was needing a shuttle, I need you to step out. Not yet. As soon as I'm done with announcements, step out. Don't don't sit here in the song service. Our shuttle team needs to know right away what is the status of your flight. So get a get an update for us if you can. Can you do that? So also checkout is still 2 p.m. So that means you need to have everything out of your uh, out of your cabins there. Uh, yeah, um, we'll make more announcements about what we want you to do with the cabin um, at the end of service. But just remember, check out of this too. We did get the grounds, as we said, Tony, 545, they said, or 530. So till 5. See me, see Brother Brad Yance. Brother, wave your hand, Brother Brad. See Brother Brad, if you want to be baptized, the Lord's put that upon your heart or rebaptize. And true Christian baptism, then we want you to have that opportunity um, here. I know there's already at least one that w has told us. So if you want to be part of that group, just let us know. Um, make sure you help clean up your dorm and pick up any trash you see laying around the grounds. Brother Branham taught us as Christians not just to leave things. Brother Branham taught us that as Christians that we should be better than anybody else. We should have Christ-like nature. And so not just to leave things, Brother Brandon said, don't just leave it the way you found it. Leave it better than how you found it. So make sure we represent ourselves and the name that we're carrying, the name of Christ, that we represent that well. Also, you don't have to leave. Okay, I've got this already right at 2. You can stay till 530, but they can't be in the dorms. So you can't be in your dorms. Can't be in the dorms past 2. They'll have cleanup crews going in there, so don't go back in. Um, did you all enjoy the activities? Amen. Get that ready, Brother George, if you could. Have that ready on the screen. 
go ahead and get that ready. You know, I'm so glad campers enjoyed. You got that, Brother George? So glad that uh, campers enjoyed the activities and the swing and the, the rock climbing wall and the different ones. I'm thankful for God's grace that no one died. <laughs> Amen. No one got hurt. No one got injured. And we're, we're just grateful for that. And I just hope that you all had a good time. Uh, make that full screen if you could. You know, um, plenty of volume there. It's, uh, no, no, full screen. Nope, 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 nope. Wrong button. Wrong button. You, the button to the left of play. The button to the left of play. Click that. Now go up to the top left. These PC Windows users. Top left, green button. There you go. Up, up, a little higher, a little higher, 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 left. Left, 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 left. Click. Click now. Oh, okay. You guys are really messed up now. All right. Put the mouse over the, the, the video again. Put the mouse over the video again. Put that. Now go up to the top. Higher, higher. Everybody with me. Higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher. Lift the mouse higher. Okay, now left, 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 left. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Go up, 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 up. Now move over to and stop. Don't go up any higher. No higher. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. No, move just a little to the left. Little to the left, just a smidge to the left. Mouse to the left. Now, uh, enter full screen. Enter full screen. Move your mouse down. Down. Click, click, click now. Now. There we go. <laughs> they did it. All right, that's a play button right there. <laughs> it wasn't just the kids who enjoyed the swing. I want to show you what happens to full-grown men. <laughs> Go ahead and play that. Go ahead and play that, full-grown. Reach as far back as you can and grab onto that brown string right there. Okay. All right, so we're doing this swing right here, right over the lake. We got Brother John right here. I think he's pulling the cord for the Danny Torres right here. He's uh, I'm hoping, ready. hoping he won't die. <laughs> All right. They were repenting the whole way up. We're higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Run, Jim. Lift Jesus higher. Notice that my size is higher than John's. My size is higher ready. than John's. Ah! 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 You'll notice from Brother Danny's face that full-grown men turn into 13-year-old boys. I'm sure I'm a dead man after church for playing that video to y'all. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. I want to say something really quick. Amen. I think this camp, you guys, all the campers, we have the best campers. Y'all are awesome. We have very minimal issues. Really cool. Yeah. How many are ready for next year? Yeah. Even better next year. We're going to have a few specials. We're going to have three, so if they can just be prepared when I call them really quick, it's going to be William Andes, 
Stephen Short, and the Hickory Bible Tabernacle Choir. So we're going to try to squeeze everybody in, have a really good, powerful service, and have a good time here on this last, last service. American Airlines, we love you. You got to go. Everybody that's flying on American Airlines, go check. Go step out now and check. If you can, let Sister Wanda know um, if your status has changed. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> One more time to be together. Let's sing, we're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. And one accord. Oh, something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together. the deacons to come and take the offering. Amen. At this time, amen, we can get the deacons to, to come. Amen. Amen. 
Let's just bow our heads. Amen. Lord, we just appreciate you now, Father. Lord, it's been such an awesome camp. Lord, we just really enjoyed ourselves, Lord, and all the services, Lord, and the preaching on the word and the, the deliverance that so many of the young people receive, Father. Lord, we ask, Lord, as we go back to our homes, Lord, that we just continue to feast on the words, Lord, that was spoken to our heart and our spirit now, Father. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to anoint, Lord, the remaining of these services now, Father. We thank you now, Father, Lord. We ask you to bless this offer now, Father. Let it be used for the glory and the benefit of these services now, Father. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to be with the young people now, Father, Lord, as we enter in, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word this morning. In Jesus' name, the church says, amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have victory. Whoa. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demon had to flee. See? short can follow and then hickory um, bible tower now man i wonder if we can give our musicians a hand (laughs) 
really, uh, really appreciate them and all that they do and just the whole team. It's such a joy to just listen to them play. So I hope this song's a blessing to you. I was asked to sing it, so if you know it, you can sing it with me. People say that our God's dead. He has no power or mind. They deny that he's living. Think this faith is a lie. We can't help that they say this, for they do not understand. They wander and reason, say our Jesus was just a man. Oh, but what about the truth? What about the lie? What about the message? Is it still alive? Think upon his goodness that he's done in your life. It's not just some story. God's power is alive. There's no purpose in leaving. God's voice in this day. Don't lean to reason or the world's filthy way. For we have a vision. No power can hold us back. Just stay faithful with Jesus and he'll keep you on track. So I what about this truth? Oh, what about the light? What about the message? Is it still alive? Think upon his goodness that he's done in our lives. It's not just some story. Our God This is still a message. Oh, yes, it is a lie. Think upon his goodness that he's done in our lives. It's not just some story. Our God's power is alive. Oh, this is still the truth. Oh, this is still the truth. If you believe it this morning. Oh, Just think upon his goodness that he's done in our lives. It's not just some story. Our God's power is alive. It's not just some story. God's power is alive. My God's power is God bless you all. Sure appreciate all of the, the the word of God that's just so true and it rings in our hearts. And uh, I think, you know, it kind of 
reminds us of where we're from. And uh, this song here, the La Fontaines wrote it, and I, I believe so anyway. Um, and I really appreciate the different ones that write songs. You know, the Lord has wonderful gifts in the message. And, uh, you know, this song, I liked it when I heard it first. You know, it was, it was a, a really beautiful song, and I liked it, you know. But the message really didn't ring for me, I guess, um, until recently. You know, it, uh, it's just amazing, you know, how you can go through life and not realize, you know, how true that it is that we came from God. And, uh, you know, that's where we're, we're going. So anyway, this is, this is a song that uh, I hope will bless you guys. Where were you, Job, when the sons of God shouted for joy and the morning stars sang their happy song? Do you recall at all before the world was formed the feeling of being whole?
Praying Tabernacle Choir to come. Amen. So this was just brought up to our church a few weeks back, so just pray for us. Uh, this apparently was a big hit at BYC, so if you know it, please sing along with us. Jesus blinded all my darkness, sparked my heart within, his grace and mercy lit a passion, consumed my sin, now like a city on a hilltop, I'll shine through
everyone that made all of this possible. And I want to give you just a brief three, four minute testimony. And I'm not really going to go into to the details of it because I'd need 30 to 40 minutes. But you have, uh, I'm trusting that you've had an enjoyable time and uh, enjoying one another, enjoying the ministry, enjoying the presence of the Lord. We, this whole camp has been purposed for the benefit of the youth. Amen. I'm happy that I got, I'm glad they let me come. Amen. And I'm glad that other pastors and senior ministers, much older than me, like, I'm not going to call his name, but his initials are Mike Walls. And, <laughs> and uh, not much older, Brother Mike, but we, we, we kept laughing. We kept looking at each other, laughing at John and, uh, and saying, and Burley saying they were old. I thought, you guys are puppies. What are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. So, but we have so enjoyed it. And I just want to give you this testimony. And Brother Matt mentioned this earlier uh, in the meetings that it's almost unbelievable if I would start to tell you how the enemy has fought this camp. And it's, it's, you're, it's been impossible, really. I can, I'm here to tell you what has been pulled off here was beyond impossible. Somebody else had to be in control. Amen. So that means, and I want you to realize, that means he loved you and knew you'd be here and wanted the word to go forward without hindrance. I think the Lord deserves a hand today. And you know, as I was, as I was driving this morning, an inspiration struck me. I almost wish I could preach it today. But, you know, during... Um, World War II, which was actually the second woe in the book of Revelation, had to come. World thought that they think they know what that's about. It was, it was only about God getting Israel back into their homeland and preparing them for Messiah. But one of the things that was notable when I started thinking about all, everything that we overcame as a team, and I'm not going to go down the list today, but just trust me, the list is long, and there were a number of impossible situations that I just didn't see how it could be done. And yet, in ways I cannot explain to you, if you needed me to, I couldn't explain that certain things happen, and they just happened, and I don't even know how they happened. But they happened, and it went off, and here we are. And I thought about how that during World War II and the Allied and Axis powers clashing, and you know, it's, it's, it's notable in history, the invasion of Normandy, uh, when the Allied forces under Dwight Eisenhower stormed the beaches at Omaha and Utah and Sword and the different beaches, and the Axis powers were dug in. And I mean, they were dug in. And they, they had almost every kind of weapon imaginable to stop the Allied advance because what the Allies needed to be able to do was establish a beachhead. If they could get a toehold and get landed and, and marshal their forces, then it, was, then it was, as Churchill said, it is not the, the end, the beginning. He said it's not even the beginning of the end. He said it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Because from there, they could march in through France and cross through Belgium and into Europe and into the Rhineland and, and, and move Axis forces back. But, but, but the Axis forces knew that if they can just stop them from getting that first initial beachhead landing, then they can, they can either prolong or maybe even force the Allies to just try to have a peace. And I thought about how the enemy has taken this first youth camp, this very first one for Bethel Tabernacle, and we're just a small seaside church, 120 couple people counting youngins, and, and, and there was really no way to do it, and the enemy has fought us and fought us and fought us, but God in this first year has established a beachhead. Amen. And from here, I believe we can push on to the coming of the Lord. I, I sent you, I hope you got it. I sent you a little message from my heart to yours uh, on, the, uh, on the camp text. I hope you got that. If you, di if you didn't, ask somebody to show it to you. Just a few words from, from my heart to yours. And I thought about all of these weapons that the Axis powers were wielding. They had knives and bayonets. They had M1884-983 bayonets. I mean, these were nasty bayonets. They had, they had submachine guns. 
they, and I, they had Stenmark twos, and they had uh, FG 42s, and they had machine guns. They had, uh, they had MG 08s, MG 34s, MG 42s to try to mow down the advancing allies. They, they, had, they had rifles, and, and they, I don't even, can't even pronounce some of these names. They had Mausers, and they had, they had Lee Enfield Marks, and if, fortunately, the allies were the only ones smart enough to use Winchester shotguns. They're the only ones that had them, but they had anti-tank weapons. They had Panzerfaust 60s, and, 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 and they had grenades, and they had you know, had number 75 Hawkins grenades and number 82 Gammon. I'm sorry, those, those are English. They had, they had M24, wow, style hand grenade. And, and they had landmines. And they had Glassman 43 anti-personnel mines. They had flamethrowers. Flamethrower 41s. They had, they had, they had uh, you know, uh, all of these things. And even they had explosive charges. And you know what they called their explosive charges? SDKFZ 302 Goliath. Amen. But God had a purpose, and he was done with that movement. It was accomplished against purpose, and God was erased all of that. But fortunately, he had a super wife who remembered it all. Amen. And Sister Amy was like, no, this is what we're going to do. No, this is what we're going to do. And, and I'm here to tell you, and Sister Rachel, my, my own daughter-in-law, and all of the other ladies and brothers behind and behind every good man was a better woman probably. And, and, it, it, and, and, you know, but regardless of all of that, none of it could have been possible if it weren't for you. And I, I, I want to salute you. Young people, God bless you for your stand. God bless you for your courage. And, and, and as great as that is, none of it at all. With all of those teams and all of that leadership and you coming and all of us gathering and preachers preaching. Brother Branham said, I can, he said, no matter how anointed, I can be in the back. He said, if I come out and there's resistance, he said, God won't move. Brother John could have prayed and fasted for 40 days and come out here at 110 pounds. But if you were resistant to the word, God wouldn't move. I'm thanking you that you moved. I'm thanking you that your hearts were open. And above all the teams and above Brother Matt, and above Brother Jason, above their wives behind them, above you and I, there was one great one among us. And had it not been for him, none of this would have been possible. Amen. Put your hands together for him. The Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand to our feet today. We want to welcome Brother John to this final service. It always comes that way. It all comes all too quickly. You start it, and the next thing you know, you're done. And I, I trust that you have received what you need, and I know that there are yet needs. I know that because we have another service right now. And I know that God purposed this service to continue to meet needs that haven't yet been met. If you've got a need and you feel it hasn't quite yet been met, listen, you go to a restaurant, you're not going to get anything unless you put in an order. So why don't you raise your hand and put in your order right now. Say, Lord, I have needs yet. We've had service after service. We've had prayer lines and prayer lines and prayer lines. But I still have a need, Lord, and I'm still before you today. And I want you to come in the power and demonstration of your word. Not word only, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I believe God will see that hand. Amen. God bless you. Brother John, we want to welcome you. It's been awesome to have you here. The other ministers that have ministered along with you. Uh, Brother Burley, who couldn't be here this morning, he had to cover base at home. And uh, we so appreciate him. Appreciate Brother Diggs. Appreciate all the people that made this possible. Amen. Were there any other ministers that, that went down the list? Brother John, Brother Burley, Brother Diggs? Uh, oh, well, I was just a fill-in. <laughs> Amen. But praise the Lord. Come, Brother John. Take your liberty today. Give him a hand. <laughs> song come by here my lord oh come by here this is our last opportunity oh come by here my lord come why don't you sleep
slip up your hand to him as a prayer. Just invite him there. Someone's praying. Let's sing that. Somebody you come by here. Come someone's praying, Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's someone that's needy. We're going to sing that. Our brother Jason DeMars needs our prayers this morning. He labored right through uh, valiantly last night with uh, us praying for you. And today he just needs our prayers. He's not going to be at this service live, but I'm just praying the Lord Jesus will just touch him and take away dizziness. Can all the warriors join together now? We're going to sing this, Someone's Needy, Lord, then we're going to pray for our Jason DeMars in this service. Someone's needy, Lord, come by, Lord, come by here. Someone's needy, Lord, oh, someone's needy, Lord, come. Oh, come by that little trailer on this campground. Visit our brother Jason to Mars. Someone's needy, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Lord, come by. All right, let's bow our heads and you pray and we'll pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're lifting up our hands in this atmosphere. First, we want to praise you and thank you for your mighty goodness, for your mercy and the passion of your love that has ran after each one of us this weekend. It's like you have cradled us in your arms. Lord, you have spoken very deeply to our hearts. We will never be the same. We can never be the same, Lord, after going into that private place with you. Now, Lord, we stand with a need this morning of our brother Jason DeMars. You see, Lord, these last weeks and how Satan would have loved to have taken him out and taken him from us. And you see, even last night, late, the dizziness was trying to afflict him. And even this morning, Lord, there's many warriors here that have their hands lifted and we're joining our faith together. Oh, yeah that the healing angel would go by that little trailer, wherever Brother Jason DeMars is right now. Strengthen his body. Strengthen his mind. Send a double portion of your vitamins and your strength, Lord, into our brother, how he's labored, how he's unselfishly given of himself and his family, Lord. I pray that you would pour back into our brother Jason. Let us rise up as a generation and learn to pray one for the other and hold one another up in prayer. Let us not just talk about it. Let us not just sing about it. Let us not just preach about it. But let us go into action now and let our faith be exercised in this closing service, Lord. We just have a few more moments together before we leave. And I'm asking the presence of God would settle upon this building like a cloak, Lord, that every word would be directed from your heart to our hearts. Take the last few words you say, and may they bring a reality to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's turn to our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 this morning. How many believe in miracles? Amen. We have less than an hour. How many believe in miracles? Yeah. 
Praise God. So, hey, man, y'all be praying for Brother John that we can uh, be a miracle today. Hey, man. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, brothers, I think we'll just go right to the scripture. Good morning. Good morning. Bethel Tabernacle Youth Camp. Here we are. We've come down to this. Are we going to run together well? Yes. Are we going to finish strong? Yes. Are you going to work with us? All right. And may you pull really hard and God give Brother John discipline from behind the pulpit. I just want to say what he wants to say to you and then we all have to go. Uh, but let's just bring our thoughts, our strength. Uh, you probably didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I didn't either. So we're all in this together. But it's not by our might or by our strength. It's by the Spirit of God. And we want to speak this morning on the rising generation. And I believe I'm speaking to some of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49. I believe young people can take the meat of the word and go a little bit deeper. So here we are, Paul speaking in verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earth, earthy. I want you to notice the rest of the... Uh, verses we're going to read, the shall, the all. It includes all of us, and it's so positive. As we have bore the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Amen. You are going to make it. Amen. Now this I say, brethren, that the f flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, Paul said, I show you a mystery. We shall... Not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Is that what the Bible says? We're not going to leave any of you out. We shall all be changed. In a moment. Let's all say a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. How many realize that could happen during this service right now? Yes. How many realize Brother Branham could come walking through that back door? Yes. How many of you have loved ones in your church or family that have passed away that you know are believers? They could come walking, Brother Jason, right up the stairway, come walking out behind this curtain, come Sister Deb right back there. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I mean, that would certainly wake up some of you. You talk about a last service that we would have as we would see these things. We're living in the time of the resurrection. Young people, this is the very next event for the bride of Christ is for the resurrection. But before that change, God's bringing messages to you to prepare your heart to be ready. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, no matter how young you are or strong you are, all of our bodies and even our minds and our brains are passing away and it's corrupting, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who giveth Bethel Tabernacle Youth Camp and all of us together the victory! We have the victory. Yes. Not we will have it. You have it. Yes. It's in you. Yes. So what are, what's some of the final words in verse 58 that we're going to hear after the closing remarks, after all of this has been said and done? Therefore, my beloved brethren, young people, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always, say always, always, abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know 
to all the teams, we thank you. We know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you do something as unto the Lord, it's not in vain. Jesus is in this building right now. Does anybody else sense him? Anybody else sense the, that other presence? Hallelujah. It's there to awaken you. And that's why we have these meetings. Is that it would awaken these desires that you have inside of you for him. He's here to awaken those things. Our last closing remarks. May the Lord speak to you in Jesus' name. Thank you. You can have your seats as the brothers bring up our slides. The rising generation. And because our time is short, and Brother John is part of the miracle that's going to happen this morning, and get you out before your lunch time. Thank you for letting us come and be part of your lives. This is a, a unique service, a special for all of us. I want to speak as, as a middle-aged man born and raised in the message to you speaking to the rising generation. And I believe what Brother Branham said in this quote is now been made real this weekend as you have made individual booths as we heard last night and that there's something laying right ahead for us and brother Branham in the message a man running from the presence of the Lord said remember I, I believe I'm prophesying great joys lays ahead believe it that's right many saddened hearts will be made great mysteries will be made clear and people who are sad will be turned into joy thank you Jesus and as this weekend we've walked together through this is actually a, a doctor is looking into the heart of the matter you can see them as they're looking over the heart of the person and, and we've spoken along with brother Burley and brother Cadre and brother Jason we've we've linked our gifts together for you to be servants on, on restoration and we've seen even throughout these last months how God has brought a theme now right. of restoration and how it's just continuing and last night we were speaking about the spiritual contractions trying to understand the thirst and the spasms and the groanings of what you have been going through as young people and then just directing your hearts to the booths now just as we leave our the campground this afternoon and all of us will and I prayed with my wife before the meetings and as we came into this services that every single person that came onto this campground as you drove in, that when you drove out, that you would be changed. And I believe for some of you that has happened. And I believe for all of us, we're better Christians this afternoon than when we came onto the grounds. Prayers have gone for you and the restoration now of your booth is now comes back to your consecration. It comes back to your personal dedication to the Lord. It's not for the crowd now. We're, we're going to leave the camp and the 400 people or so. And this afternoon we're going to have fathers and mothers and pastors and grandparents picking us up and driving us back to the airport and buses and in cars and some in airplanes as I just checked my flight and I think it's okay for tomorrow morning. But here we are speaking to a rising generation. And uh, thank you, brothers. Maybe you can just leave it on uh, slide number one as I just come now into uh, the service for the rising generation. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Remember, miracles do happen. Right. And I believe I'm, I'm standing in the midst of a miracle. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we read, we heard about the resurrection. And there's two risings that I want to focus on this morning. And that is number one, the bride is rising. Now listen really fast with me. The bride is rising. But one day the sleeping saints are going to rise. 
They've been sleeping. They've been laying in the ground. They've been waiting for you and I to come to our placing. They've been waiting for the last one. And there's been years have gone by. You've had grand, great grandparents and grandparents and fathers and mothers and now and, and people around you. And now there has to be a generation rise up that realize we are not in a going down generation, but we are in a rising generation. When Jesus stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. There was so much power and authority in that voice that if he would have said, come forth, every dead person would have come out of the grave. Come forth. But he spoke specifically. He spoke his name and Lazarus walked out of that grave and he was stinking after four days. And that was the duty of Christ, the Messiah. How many is thankful for the Holy Ghost, how he speaks to us? But how many know what Jesus then said to the people around, the family, the people? He said, loose him and let him go. Take off those grave clothes. Take off those, those dead things. And that is our responsibility to one another as we leave this campground, when we go back home to our families and our jobs, our schools and churches. We have a responsibility God does his part, but we have our part. And young people, it's time to rise and step up into your calling. You're not babies, you're not children, and we're not going to handle you with kid gloves no more. We're very earnest today. I think it's a time to be sober. Hello? If you're slumbering or if you're sleeping like the foolish virgin, it's time to wake up. Wise virgins also, in Matthew, they were slumbering and slipping. The Bible says they all slumbered. But at midnight, there came a cry. And that has already happened now, where God has awakened now the bride of Christ. Some of you are already going to sleep here. Amen. Did you all stay up late last night? It's time to rise. This is like the final words of the captain of the Lord of hosts with his sword drawn, is standing in front of us saying, go forward. Let's go on. Lazarus, come forth. You put your name there. Come forth in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe put the name of a loved one there. I'm going to go out from here receiving a charge, a commission. Stop being so selfish. Stop thinking always of your needs and your life and, you know, iPhone and iPad. and It's a me generation and all the selfies, you know, and all of that. It's time to now be mature young people. Take out the garbage. Say thank you to your mother. It's amazing how we can go from the third pool right down into our, where we live. Brother John takes out the trash at our house. That's what real men do. Sometimes you got to get dirty. Sometimes you got to say, I'm sorry. That should be the zeal of young people to say, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Just deposit your arrogant spirit in a trash can back there by Brother Yance and Brother Gurgle. Just deposit it there. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You've packed your bags. Maybe you're going to. You brushed your teeth. You came today. But I'm going to speak directly to your situation and the mind of the Lord for now this season as we go out. I want to speak very clearly because we don't have time to talk between the lines. Victories lay in your future. It's time to get up and go forward. It's time to press on and obey. It's time to take the words that you've heard from a little baby, from a little youth, and stop going to meetings like this and going back home and then throwing it back into the face of God a week later, two weeks later, and you're back worse than you ever was. Don't do that this year. 
All of heaven's behind you. All of the word is behind you. It's time to arise. It's time to leave. It's time to go. Praise God. The bride of Jesus Christ is living in a revival time. The wife of Christ is actively making ourselves ready. And Brother Branham said in the seventh seal, when the supernatural comes in, that's the mind of Christ. You become so far away from your own thinking till in your own mind, he said, don't let me try to explain that because I can't. I couldn't do it. There's nobody could do it. Friends, what, as we go along as young people, as you get a little older, you realize your minds will fail. You'll forget things. As people have gotten older and as lifestyles have gotten older in North America and around the world, there's something called dementia and Alzheimer's that grips good people. How many's ever heard of that before? Dementia, Alzheimer's, they forget who they are. They'll forget a family member. The people that used to love you and embrace you and their face would just light up and they would just be able to communicate. Now you walk in and they look at you and there's no response. You could be family. You could be someone at church and they just look at you and, Hello, we're here to visit you. And they'll just look at you like this. It's Alzheimer's. Something's affected their brain. It's a disease. It's where Satan comes in at the end time to destroy minds. Spiritually, there's a lot of people that suffer from spiritual dementia, spiritual Alzheimer's. They, they forgot who they are. They forgot where they're going. And God help us. This is not a backsliding time. This is not time to get worldly. This is not the time to be too busy. You've got, you say, I don't have time or I'm too busy. But you've got time for a lot of other things. We've heard some strong word this weekend. But it's time to show by our lives that we believe. Believers believe, not just in a service, but where the rubber meets the road. And at school and in your family and when it's just... And you might not even get to the lunch time or go, get home and something negative happens. How are you going to respond to that? It's time to rise. You, you are living in a rising generation. This is the time to be ascending, getting higher in Christ, going to spiritual places that you have never been before. You've never, you don't understand, you've never been there. You feel like, like the mother eagle is kicking you out of the nest and you, and you turn it around saying, what are you doing? And what, why is it so prickly in this nest? It's God telling you it's time to fly. Stop fussing. Stop singing those old songs and, you know, done somebody wrong song and talking about your hurt and your wound and your brokenness. It's time for you to believe the word of God. And in the Bible, there was a prince called Mephibosheth. And he was a prince that was wounded from a little child. When Jonathan and Saul were killed in the message, they wounded a young prince. But as the years went by and David now came to his place of anointing and kingship, he said, is there anyone of the family of Jonathan that's alive? And they said, yes, there's Prince Mephibosheth. But he lives far away in Lodabar, out of cell range. He lives in a far desert place. He's hiding from you. And David said, go get him. And Mephibosheth walks in on his crutches and on his troubles and complexes, thinking David's going to have him destroyed. Oh, I finally got the prince that's been hiding. But that wasn't what was in David's heart. That, that's not what's in God's heart to destroy you. He's here to elevate you and promote you. You all know the story. David brought him to the king's table, said, I want you to be around me, around the king's table. 
And so there was always times that Mephibosheth would come walking in. He would come a little early because there's a little bit of embarrassment and shame sometimes when you've been hurt and when you're wounded. And he would come in like this, his legs, whether it was crutches or I don't know if they had wheelchairs, and he would put the crutches under the seat, Sister Paris, and he would just sit down at the table like this. I don't know whose cell phone this is, but it's got a nice cover and $10 in the back. <laughs> Praise God, I'll just take this cover off. Is that for Starbucks money? Oh, it's not your phone, okay. And everybody's walking in, and all the people's walking in. They're all happy and sitting at the table. Mephibosheth's just sitting down at the table, and David comes walking in. The king and Mephibosheth is just tears coming out of his eyes. Because when you're all sitting around the table, we're all the same. You can't see my lameness. You can't see what's going on. But I'm just glad to be here. And David is there in his presence. And it's so wonderful to be around the king. And isn't it wonderful? To be the king's kids and a daughter of God and a son of God. Who thinks that's wonderful? And you cannot see the lameness under the table. It's all under the blood. It's all behind you. Leave the past behind you and rise. Jump out of the nest and let the wings of faith carry you into God's will for your life and don't be ashamed of it don't be ashamed of what God's done for your life you're not going to flat fall flat on your face and if you do what are you going to do you just get back up again you brush yourself off you get the mud off and you keep pressing on that's a rising generation God's asking some of you to step out of your comfort zone and to move from the carnal to the spiritual. He's asking you to move addresses from the earthly to the heavenly. I'm speaking very clearly. I hope you're listening good. Move from being so carnal and move into being more spiritual. It's time to check out from this world. It's time to check out from this world. It's time for the saints that are sleeping to rise. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 17 speaks about the coming of the Lord. We don't have time. It speaks about two will be in a bed, one will be taken, and the other left. How many's heard that before? Amen. Okay, so we don't need to turn to it. Two in a bed, one will be taken, and one will be left. So it wasn't a homosexual lifestyle because one left. Is everybody being spiritual? Wake up. You don't need the ministry to always be speaking about relationships to get into the service. You're old enough to take some of these things now. Two in a bed, one will be taken, and one will be left. That's got to be you. Two will be grinding at the field and working. One's going to be taken, and one's going to be left. The one that's taken, that is you. Two will be in a field. One will be taken. One will, think about how close of a relationship it would be to be in the same house, to be in the same bed. One has a walk with God. One has their own private booth. One has their own consecrated life. And the very person, Brother Matthew, that's right next to them is not where they should be. We sing when we all get to heaven. But it is an individual walk with God. Malachi 4 verse 5 and 6 speaks about a generation that would receive a word prophet. That's number one. Number two, their hearts would be turned. Turned from the world. Turned from the things of this life. I was going to say denominations, but most of you don't even know what a denomination is. That was 30 years ago in the message. Hello, from conventions and youth meetings, it was come out of herd, come out of denominations. Most young people don't even know what you're talking about, Brother Kadri. That's not the nations that they need deliverance from. In the prayer line last night and in personal, when young ladies come up and young men, just I, I could ask all the ministers, was there one of them that say, I need help to come out of the Baptist denomination? 
Brother Mike, can, Brother Mike, just stand to your feet. He's our senior elder. Brother Mike, was there any of the young ladies or young men that said, I need deliverance from the Catholic Church and the whore? Say it loud. Any of these brothers? The young people of today, you're living in another generation. But there are a lot of nations that are trying to capture our young people. And it's time to rise out of that. I'm asking this morning, where is the generation that will go in the rapture? Where are you? Are you hiding in despair? Are you in a cave of despondency? Are you always depressed and talking about somebody hurt you? Are you always so wounded that a friend left you and you get thumbs down? Y'all know what I'm talking about. 30 years ago, they would have said, what are you talking about? Every single person here probably knows what I'm talking about. Like, dislike. Right? I don't care if there's 648 of this, but Jesus gives you the this. You follow Christ. I'm speaking my last sermon this morning to you, the last generation. This is what's on our hearts. You are the generation that's going to make the change. You are the generation that Paul talked about. Brother Branham talked about. Men of old and sages, they would have loved to have been at this camp service. Do we recognize our day and its message that there will be a generation, believers, that are alive and remain, that are going to take a hold of a word. They're going to latch a hold of it and the word will take them in a rapture. The rapture is a catching away. It's already started. And remember in Matthew 25, the ten virgins, the Bible says in verse 5, they all slumbered and slept. But there came out a word, and the Bible says they all arose. So the rapture is arising. It is arising. And the call of the message causes arising in the individual. It's time to rise up. I think Brother Caleb Campbell, where are you at this morning? Had that yesterday. It's, it's time to get up. It's time to wake up. Oh, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. It's time to wake up. It's time to stir yourself. It's time to get stirring and get active. Because we're living in the final acts. The final acts of an age. The bride is making ready to go and God is putting the final touches on his master pieces. There's been camps, camps, brides, brides, churches, churches, generations, young ladies, young men. But one day there's going to be a generation. There's going to come a sweep over us. There's just in a twinkling of an eye. Everybody twinkle your eye just like this. Now don't look to either side of the room, you know. But you just twink your eye like that's how fast it's going to happen. You shall be changed. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians. We need this and this miracle. We're walking in a miracle right now. Look up. For your redemption draweth nigh. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm just going to read one verse, but you can read... Maybe write this down. Some of you are writing notes. That's very good. Very good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is the rapture. Chapter verse 16. The Bible says, For the Lord himself... And we got the lion of the tribe of Judah up there. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. For the Lord himself... Let's say Lord himself... himself. Shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's number one, right? With the voice of the archangel, number two, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise. That's what we're looking for. The resurrection is a real event. It's the hope of the church. 
And I have quotes for what I'm saying to you. It's the hope of the church is the coming of the Lord. So before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, God's going to send a prophet that will literally turn the hearts of the last day children back to the faith. And I, I thank God for the Hickory Bible Tabernacle Choir and how they, they sang that song with passion and that God has lit your flame. I hope some of you God has lit your flame. I heard some of you sisters rejoicing and responding last night. Don't ever be embarrassed in the presence of God. Just learn to know that that is the place. That's a safety place. When I walk out of airplanes many times, and you'll see right on the wall, the jetway, Brother Jason, it said, this airport is a safe place. That means if you're going through times of trouble or if you feel danger in your life, you can come to this place. Talk to somebody. Talk to staff. Talk to an airline. Talk to somebody. This is a safe place. If you're abused, if you're being handled wrong, the presence of God is a safe place. Amen. Learn to run in there. Learn to let go. Learn to let off the pressure. Learn to lift these hands. Let's try it right now. Let's all lift these hands. It's, some of you are very tired. Some of you are. Take these hands and lift them up. For I have not the strength near enough. And then you start just... This is a safe place. Amen. I just heard yesterday of another church in the message. And it's just high level things where young boys are being mishandled sexually. That, that just does something to me. It touches a raw nerve. Amen. Not just one, two, three, up to five. You want to see the blood boil of a real man of God? Is when you hear about that happening. And people trying to cover it up and condone it. That's not the message. I don't care who it is, what church it is. When that's all that we've preached for and lived for is to strengthen our young people, strengthen our families. And for a spirit to come in and people's trying to cover it up, trying to sanction it. Because they're related to the pastor. This is just yesterday. I say, God rebuke that thing. That is not the Holy Ghost. That is not the nature of the word. There needs to be a rooting out and a repentance. That's why there's a lack of revival in the message. It's because young people hear what we've heard this weekend. And they go back home and go back to places that is hiding sin. We, our young people deserve better than that. Amen. You're God's children. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, we see this just quickly. The shout, the voice, and the trumpet. Brother Branham said in the rapture message, December the 4th, 1965, the word rapture in the Bible is not even used at all. But the Bible said caught up, being caught up. And that's in 1 Thessalonians. That was later down in that chapter. It's the order of the great rapture that will take place in the last days. Three things that has to happen before the Lord himself appears. Are you listening quickly? Shout, voice, a trumpet has to happen before Jesus appears, Jesus does all three of them when he's descending. I'm reading from a prophet. A shout. It's the message going forth. The living bread of life bringing forth the bride. So if Jesus does all three of these things as he descends and the shout is the message, we have a right to say this morning, the message, the rapture has already begun. It's a catching away. It's something to gather the people together. A shout and then a trumpet. The trumpet is with the sound of a, tr a shout of voice. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to go quickly and, and skipping over. But he said, what is it? 
A shout of voice and trumpet. A shout, it's the message to getting ready. The second is the voice of the resurrection. The same voice. Let's all say same voice. Amen. With a loud voice, not a whisper. But in John 11, when he called Lazarus from the grave, getting the bride together, the resurrection of the dead, and to be caught up with it, watch the three things. The, the, the next was a trumpet, shout, voice, and a trumpet. The sound of a trumpet, what does it call? A trumpet calls, and he's talking about the Feast of the Trumpets, a Pentecostal feast and the Feast of the Trumpets. He goes on, but a trumpet is to announce a calling together. That's what we've had this week, and also spiritually, we have been introduced in the month of October to the Feast of Tabernacles. But before the feast, you've got to have a booth. Do I have your attention? You've got to get personal and private. The rapture is a stirring. Friends, this is not the time to fall back. I'm giving you these final words. This is not the time to fall back. You cannot fall back. It's time to step up like going up a ladder. Come on, young people, step up. Matthew chapter 9 is an illustration of the scripture. One of the illustrations of Jesus, Matthew 9, verse 18, we're not going to turn to it, of a maid, a damsel, a young girl, a teenage girl, maybe, or a young girl, the Bible says maiden, where Jesus raised her from the dead. They all said she was dead. Listen to me. Are you listening? They all said she's dead. And Jesus said, no, she's just sleeping. And you know what the Bible says? They laughed him to scorn. He was seeing one thing, and they were seeing another. It's time that we turn our eyes upon Jesus and stop talking about the death and speak about the resurrection. So where do you have your eyes this morning? Are you looking at all the death and the problems? Or you have your eyes on, I'm with you, Jesus. She's just sleeping. And just speak the word. He got everybody out of the house. Uh -huh. And in just a few moments, she was walking around. Wow. Oh, thank God she can go to lunch. <laughs> Praise God, it's been extended from 2 o'clock to 5, 5.30. Now we can talk. And look, isn't it beautiful? Everybody look over here outside. Be distracted for a moment. <laughs> Goodness. Brother Travis told me about the water and the lake and so... We're going to go out there in a few minutes. In a few minutes. There's another place in Luke 7. Are we doing okay? There was a dead boy being brought out of the city of Nain. It was a widow. The mother, his mother was a widow. That means the boy had lost his father and it was the only child. And Jesus saw everybody crying and weeping. And he said, you know what? There's going to be a Monday for that young man. I see a Tuesday. I see another birthday. I see another year. I see you as an overcomer. I see you as somebody that's going to be strong in the church. I'm going to say something right now. For many, many years, being raised in the message, Brother John has been raised in the message. There's a little slogan and a little phrase we've heard for many, many years. Said by a lot of ministers. And that is that the young people and the children of the message are the church of tomorrow. And they would address them that you are the church of tomorrow. You are the church of tomorrow. How many's ever heard that before? You, the young people and the children are the message of church of tomorrow. Well, let me just say something this morning. Tomorrow has arrived. Yeah. Amen. I'm not speaking to the church of tomorrow. You are the church of the now. You are the generation that is breathing these messages and word. It's pulsating in your bosom. Some of you will never reach 20, 30, 40. You're going to be changed. We need that door left open, brother. Thank you, brother. It's getting a little warm in here. Thank you, brother. Hey, just push it wide open. Thank you, brother. Come on in. We need this. You missed the last few minutes. How many get what I say? Amen. If I said you're the church of tomorrow, you said, then I got time, Brother John. I got time. We don't have no more time. Time is up. We're in overtime. Yeah. 
Some of you that love sports know you can go whole regulation, basketball, hockey, football, whatever you like, and then it'll go to regulation, then there'll be overtime. And that's when you leave it all out on the field. You might be tired, you might be weary, you might be battered, you might, your, your uniform's all muddy and grass stained or whatever, and you're just, uh, you're sucking air. Come on, everybody. But when overtime hits, you know this is when the second win. This is when everything you've trained for, everything that you believe for. And forgive me if I offend you, but let all the losers just sit on the bench. If you don't have that kind of spirit, ask God to give it to you. But don't stand in the bride's way. We're going up. You want to stay in a tribulation? That's up to you. You want to go to a hell? Where Brother Branham said a burning literal hell would be like electrical wires going through you. Come on, friends. The first five minutes of the, when the rapture happens is going to be glorious for the bride, but it's going to be torment for those in the message that have been in this type of atmosphere and missed the rapture. There ought to be some zeal in your heart. I will not miss the rapture. seated. Let's give the microphone to Brother Paul. What do you have to say? It's time to lay aside every weight and the unbelief that you came to camp with. The sin that is holding you down. I'm speaking to young ladies and young men. It might be as small as a little lipstick thing or a little, you know, you're painting your fingernails. Shame on you. We're supposed to be a bride. We're not to look like the world. trying to impress living a double life living a double standard God knows all your hinder parts and your naked parts say I've done good this weekend nobody knows and I'm going to go right back yeah you go back but there's another generation that's going to take these messages and take this atmosphere that God knew that's why Satan fought this camp so hard is because there was a blessing for you there was a revival for you there was a message for you As the days have gone by now, as the weeks have gone by, as the months have gone by and years now, many people are becoming a victim to exactly what the devil planned and what he schemed and what he devised for this generation. He planned an excellent diversion plan. I've got to distract the people from the word. A year and a half ago, that's what was in Satan's laboratory. Some of you thought it was out of Wuhan, China, or whatever you think. But it was a diversion from Satan to take you away from the Word. And to get your mind on shutdowns, masks, vaccinations, testing, data, science. You can get quiet all you want to. He got your mind on numbers and virus counts and politics, Trump or Biden. It's not going to be the Democrats that get you in a rapture. It's not going to be the Republicans. It's not going to be the independents. It's going to be, thus saith the Lord. Some of you in your churches were just coasting along. And this virus came out of nowhere. This sickness. It was on television. It was on media. It was even in message pulpits. Oh, the sickness, the virus, the death. But let me say this today. It was not the government that shut down churches spiritually. It was not local health officials that caused the coolness and the death 
to be stripping away revival from the people. There's not one person that can claim an excuse for backsliding. There's not one believer that can give an excuse of, of worldly events or school or officials. You can get so upset at the officials. No. Backsliding is not an option for a, a son or daughter of God. And I encourage you. My wife said the more they clap, the longer you preach. So I love you clapping. I really do. But I'm working in a miracle right now. Don't become a statistic. You are the church of today. Tomorrow has arrived. And God has raised up young people globally. Globally. I'm speaking this in South Carolina. But Brother John has personally witnessed in the last six months throughout all the United States and then in Europe that we've traveled and then globally speaking to young people. There is a group of young men and women that are ready to serve. They have been trained right. Their attitude is right. Their character is right. They don't speak condescending. They handle with care. They speak the truth in love. Because they came from the womb of the message, that old fighting spirit is not even in them. And that's a whole message. There were old fighters that fought and through the wilderness, and they had to be that way. They feraled the field for us. But Brother Branham talked about the sons of the old fighters. It was that generation that made it into the promised land. And you can say what you want, think what you want, but you have to acknowledge that you are in another season, in another time, another era, and you are living in a generation that God had in His mind a certain caliber of young men and young ladies, older ones, younger ones alike. I'm not making ages here. This is a generation. It's not just young people. Joshua and Caleb, they were older. Caleb was older when he said, give me my mountain. He was 85 years old. My father is 80 years old. But I'm, I'm not speaking to you in a way to uh, push you down. I'm saying this is your time to rise. Are we doing okay? I want to give a warning. Brother Burley gave some warnings. I want to give a warning. Media obsession is a disease. I'm speaking to young people the message. Some of my closing remarks. Media obsession is a disease. It clouds the mind. It clouds the spirit. And it opens up the gates of the soul to wrong spirits. Some of you young people need to listen really good right now. Media obsession is a global pandemic. It's the greatest global pandemic, and COVID is not the greatest COVID pandemic. Sorry, it is a COVID pandemic, but it's not the greatest pandemic that's in the world. COVID is not. Brother John has seen it. Media obsession is a virus. It's a disease of devices. Electronic devices. Where young people are becoming digital addictors. They're addicted to digital devices. Not drugs, not alcohol, not pills, not gaming, even though some young people and parents are more into gaming than the Word of God then you wonder why your young people are the way they are. It's time for fathers to arise, mothers to arise, ministers to arise, the church to arise. Even science will tell you, my, my time is gone, that dopamine is a chemical in the brain that is released through chemical devices 
But the Holy Spirit has sent another wage, another wave, and another surge of the Holy Spirit. We've heard enough about it in the last year. Another wave, another surge of this crazy virus. It comes in, then it'll go out. And we've heard about these waves and these surges. But I want to announce to you today, there's another wave. There's another surge. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's a powerful, sudden, forward motion. Then it goes upward. Then it goes out. Then it goes in. And then it's going to take you away one day. It's a supernatural force. Like the waves of tide that comes in and goes out. This wave of the Holy Spirit that is moving. And we've all heard about cases and restrictions and lockdowns and social distancing. And we've, we've said it already, masks and vaccines. And, you know, are you vaccinated? Are you not vaccinated? Have you been tested? That's enough and not. Uh, friends, we're in a rising generation. Death is striking the land. Sickness is striking the land. But so is another wave of the Holy Ghost. It's a global surge in the youth of this message. It's a worldwide wave of God's quickening power. It's back on display. We saw it last night. Hallelujah. We see it right now. It's in the bride. It's in the youth. It's in the youth without borders. It's the Holy Spirit does not need a passport or a visa to come into your country. Let's go to our slides now. I want to introduce you before we close. It's 12. Of, do I have a few more minutes? Okay. As we come to our, the end of the service, I want to introduce you to this lion, but I want to introduce you to the lamb. Y'all going to give me a few more minutes? No? The rising generation, you've been likened to sheep. Sheep, Bethel Tabernacle Youth Camp. This is, this is the body language of the Holy Spirit this weekend. He's been reaching for you. That's wonderful. Let, let this be something how a person can be going astray and that God is going to make you profitable in your life. I'm speaking now to the rising generation. You might have come into this camp unprofitable, but God is going to make you profitable. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I have gone astray, David said, like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandment. And we look at going astray. Some of you were in this condition coming to camp. But you, it means to err or wonder, to stagger to wonder about, the wondering of the mind, mentally, morally. This is going astray. This is what it means. And uh, the believer is typed as sheep. All, the Bible says, we uh, was astray. Away from the shepherd and away from the fold. And God has been encouraging us to come back. Come back. And then God gives you patience for other sheep to mature and come to their place. So it creates an atmosphere like a team that I, I have now patience for others. From unprofitable, now God's going to make you profitable from a slave to not much eternal good in your life of freedom to a profit, to a blessing, to contributing to the body. How many want to be a contri contribution? Amen. I want to introduce you to Chris. You all laugh, but some of you look like this on Thursday night. This is Chris. He was lost for six years, Brother Jason. This is another picture of Chris. Isn't that wonderful? You want to post that this afternoon on, on your status. I mean, this is in Australia. Even the kangaroos are looking at him saying, what's wrong with you? God bless you. Look at this. This is what he looked like when he was caught. And so when he was caught, there was an Australian sheep shearer that had set a record for clipping sheep. And he realized that this, this, this guy's life is endangered. This, this gigantic sheep named Chris had been found. He could barely walk. He was, remember, you're, you and me are like sheep. But from this... Sheep that was lost, when he was found, 
the wool that was from his, that had grown, it yielded 30 sweaters. I was going to have 15 sisters stand and 15 brothers stand and sweaters. He was profitable, but he was lost. It's incredible. So he started to shear. This was the champion man shearing. He had to be sedated, Brother Chris, because of the cruelty of animals division. It took 45 minutes to remove 18 inches, 47 centimeters of fleece. I want you to look at that because that's going to mean something. 88 pounds of 45 minutes. And this man said, I don't think it had been shorn before, and I think he's five or six years old. I I wouldn't say it's high quality, but you wouldn't expect it after so long in the bush. But this Chris, he was bre they're bred for especially for their wool. They need to be, they need to go to church regularly. They need to go to church regularly, or they can have trouble going to the bathroom and can develop serious medical issues. Oh my. Are y'all thinking about this? Yeah. Young people go through things. If we don't go to the house of God and get shorn, we have issues. Right. You might be just fine, but you start having trouble in this certain area. Yeah, it's desperate. The average Australian fleece takes approximately three minutes. Let's all say three minutes. Three minutes. How long did it take to shear Chris? That's how long it takes. If, when you're out of the spirit, when you're not living where you should, it takes a long time, but just a few moments in his presence, just an opening song, just, you know, somebody gives a scripture, and you're right there. That's how it ought to be after you leave this camp, just a few minutes. Brother Branham talked about this, about wool and lamb and the dove. Listen, look, you ought to listen to that message maybe this next week and how a sheep just lays there, forfeits its rights. This is Chris after he was shorn. A little bloody. It hadn't happened before. Look at this wool, 88 pounds. And God is likening you and I to sheep that have gone astray. I'm trying to click this, Brother Matthew, and it's not clicking. So the, the miracle needs to continue. Help me out, brothers. What a photo. Is that beautiful? This is Chris. Chris needs help. Just keep clicking, brothers. You know he was found just a few kilometers from a farm. He wasn't way away. He was very close. It wasn't like he was thousands of miles away. Some of you thought you were real far away, and you've been brought very close. God found you, found your heart. And you can see this, how he had suffered things. And he would have died within weeks. Brother Jason, the reason God allowed this weekend is because God knew if some of you wouldn't have been here, there would have been trouble ahead. So God fought through all of the unbelief so you could be here to be healed. He was shy. He was shaking. This is Shrek. Shrek or Shrek, this is our last person we're, I'm going to introduce you to. This... This young person had held the, the record for years before Chris. He was hiding in a cave. They found him hiding in a cave. Next slide. Help me out, brothers. You know, sheep look so different when they're shorn. We're closing now. This is you and me when God really works in our hearts. This is you and me. God speaking to Peter said, Take care of my lambs. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. That is a commission. We are commissioned to feed the lambs. Come down to their level. And whatever it takes. From going astray to being profitable. What do you feel like that this sheep felt like after the wool was taken off? What do you all feel like? When all this wool and all this stuff is taken off. and What do you all feel like we're going to leave this afternoon like? It's time to arise. It's time to go. 
It's time to go serve. It's time to live. It's time to... Next slide, brothers. Here we are coming down to the end. Go back one. Go back one more. Backwards. Just like a real sheep of God feels like after its excess wool is sheared off. Free, happy, unburdened, and light. And there's scriptures we could have read, but in closing, Brother Jason talked about World War II. There was something called a shepherd pilot, and that was a pilot that was guided to come next to another airplane that had been damaged and been hit and is wounded and it's barely making it back to the base. You gotta make it back home. The goal is to make it back safe. But you say, I've been wounded, I've been shot at. And they had what they called a shepherd pilot that would fly up and not take their place, but they would fly up very near. And you could watch that pilot and you could look at him and they're giving you thumbs up and they're saying, yes, yes, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it. They didn't take your place, but they only flew right in it. They're called a shepherd pilot. Where a, a, someone that had been disabled, brought back to the base by flying, just right, I, I'm just here for, to make visual contact. Let's fly home. Let's make it back to the base. I see that you're wounded. I see that your left wing is on fire, but it's okay. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're very close. It's very near. Let's get ready to land. Let's put down the landing gear. We're going to be there. And he's just flying. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As the, as the team comes and, and the worship comes, uh, our musicians come, are you thankful that God sent shepherd pilots this weekend? Fly alongside of us. Spread your wings to the winds of faith. Let's stand. Well, miracles do happen. I'll ha we'll have to do better next time. Spread your wings. Young people, you are the rising generation. I encourage you. I bless you. I strengthen your faith. We are more than conquerors. God bless you, Brother Chris. Can I shake your hand, Brother Chris? God bless you. You're wonderful. That's only the second time this whole weekend I've even shook Brother Chris's hand. I love him. Oh, spread your wings, the winds of faith. You can fly in a higher place. Higher place. Do not struggle. Sing it today before our lunch. I'll set my oh. wings. Set my Before Brother Matthew takes the service, young people, how many would say, Lord, anoint me to set my wings? You've heard wonderful messages. You've had, we've had a wonderful weekend. But it's time to fly. It's time to be real men and real women and not talk about the message and hear about it, sing about it. God, anoint us. As we raise our hands together, who would say, let the anointing of God fall on my life? Amen. All throughout the building. Anoint our lives, Lord Jesus. I want to set my wings. I want to set my life. I want to set my compass on that north star. There'll be valleys. I'm not here to paint some nice picture for anyone or some false future. You might stumble along the road. You might be shot at. Set your wings. Lift up your faith. Lift up your eyes. Our redemption draweth nigh young people. You're a rising generation. You're not going down. You're not going down. 
I speak this in the name of the Lord. You are not going down. You are going up. You are a rising generation. You shall be changed. I'll set my wings to the winds. Just lift your hands to him. Oh, I can fly. I can fly in a high. What's your need? What's your cry? Oh, what's your need? Sing it now. What's your cry? What's your mountain? Much too high. Oh, my mountain is too high. Speak the word of God. Come on, young people. Oh, by and by. Drive out of here today. One by side, oh, one by faith. Take the word of God. Oh, yes, Lord. What you see, oh, what, what you, you believe, it's what, what will you be. be. Let's everyone sing it now. Oh, oh say. praise offering. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Isn't the word just so refreshing? You feel that refreshing breeze just flow over as we dismiss, as we go, about to go to our separate places, and God just comes down one more time, and you feel that presence. Oh, friends, I don't know about you, but that feels like home to me. Feels like that's where I'm supposed to be. How many feel that way? Go out into the world, feel all the pressure. That's all waiting for you. All that stress, all that pressure, your problems, it's all waiting for you. But you know what? <clears throat> There's also a friend closer than a father, closer than a brother, closer than a mother, and he's waiting for you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother John. That was so wonderful. Close of our service. We are out of time. We have a lunch that we want to get you to. We want just to make a few closing <clears throat> um, remarks and some comments and some announcements just very quickly. I just want to um, make sure I have this here. I want to, um, you could be seated just for a second. This is important. Amen. Just take your seats. We don't have all of them here. And I wanted to say this. We said this, and some of you may not know this, but uh, we had a different desire just the, what, the way the Lord led us to do this with our counselors. Counselors are essential, not just important. They're absolute must and necessary to camp. And we had a desire in our heart to, rather than having a counselor sign-up sheet or volunteer sheet, we wanted to take our group that we knew just in the ministry 
and and we wanted to hand select our counselors uh, to 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 have ones here that we just wanted to be on camp. We had 42 of them that came from all over. I mean, all over, flying in, and they were essential for this camp. I want them to stand. We don't have nearly all 42 of them now. If we have counselors in here, could you stand up? Let's give them a real hand clap. They didn't realize this, but actually when we had them sign the waiver and the fine print was that we have a contract on them for five years. They have to come back every year. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Uh, this isn't all the thanks we could give. There were some people who didn't. I never, I never was in contact with and I'm not even aware of that we could say thanks. So I'm not trying to exclude anyone. I want, these are just people who were uh, special to me, and I want to I want to make mention of them. Sister Sharon, is she here today? Sister Sharon, could you stand? My wife hates this, and I'm sure you too, but you do too. But let's give Sister Sharon a hand for coming with Brother John. <laughs> Amen. I love Sister Sharon. So glad she was here. You know, she stayed. Brother John was there preparing and waiting. Sister Sharon wanted to stay here and fellowship and be an encouragement to the young people. And she was an encouragement. She was out there. At our, I don't know what she did here, but our, at our back home, Brother John, she played on the volleyball in the volleyball tournament. And my son Dad said, Dad, Sister Sharon just talks trash the whole time. <laughs> I think they were talking trash, and she was just giving them back, giving them back what they were giving her. <laughs> You're going to lose. Well, we want to just say um, thank you also, and I'm just going to, I hate to single one person out, a few people out, but I want to say thank you because they meant a lot to me. Brother, Brother uh, Jeremy Clayville, who's been in the back, who's tirelessly for hours and hours. I sent out a text because we needed a help. I said, if, if there's anybody in our counselor group who could help with sound and audio and video, Brother Jeremy said, I'm on my way. And man, he has been here with the other team, the Brother Michael Gonzalez, Brother George. He's been here. He's not from our church. He's from Brother Barry's church. And he's tirelessly. If he, I didn't have him, this is what it would sound like. Brother. But Brother Jeremy... Brother Philip, Brother Greg, who came here that first night, I want to say thank you for the help. I want to give them a hand for assisting us. Brother Stephen, who helped us with the video also, and just the different ones who helped, I wanted to make sure we got that out. Let's all stand back to our feet now. We're going to let you go lunch. We're going to get you there straight away. Um, you can't, you, you still need to eat staggered, so, so uh, wait for your lunch time. Amen. Turn around and shake somebody's hand. Tell them God bless you. Maybe the last time you get to see them here at camp. I want you to go in the name of the Lord. Go in the fear of God. Go ahead and be dismissed. If your lunch has already been called, please exit through the front and the back. Set your wings to the winds of faith. You can fly in a higher place. Oh, do not struggle. It's by grace. Set your wings to the winds of fate. Watch the eagle. In the sky, he does not struggle, he does not strive for the power makes him rise. It's already in the sky. Set your wings to the winds of faith. You can fly in a higher place. Do not struggle. It's by of faith.
There are two roads.